Today's episode of In the Trenches is brought to you by System 12 Guitar Method. Sign up today at RyanRoxy.com. In the Trenches with Ryan Roxy. Hello, 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 and welcome to another live stream episode of In the Trenches. I am your host, Ryan Roxy. Uh, how is everybody doing? I am West Coast living. I'm on uh, the West Coast time, which you normally know me, uh, know me on North Pole time up in the Stockholm, Sweden, but I am now find myself somewhere on the West Coast. I believe I'm in Boise or Reno or somewhere around there. Uh, we are wrapping up this Alice Cooper tour. We just uh, finished up with Buck Cherry and now we are welcoming Ace Fraley. So that's uh, been a big rock show from our uh, end over here in the Alice Cooper camp and in the In the Trenches camp. Thank you very much for listening to us on uh, Apple Broadcasts or any of those other audio broadcasts. But you know what I'm going to say. You know where I want you. I want you here in our YouTube official channel. That's YouTube, Ryan Roxy official. Uh, you can be part of the live chat as we are here Every week, we got the RGA faithful, the In the Trenches uh, diehards. Everybody's filing in because it's time to start the show. What do you say? Um, our guest this week is part of the new school, I will say. Uh, the son of rock royalty. He's carving his own path in both the fields of music and art. So let's welcome right into the trenches, just diving right in, Willem Wolf. Hello, Willem. Hey, hey. How's it going? <laughs> a completely Ooh. different look. It's a I was little weird, a little change. <laughs> I thought I'd scare you a little bit there. You kind of freaked me out a little bit, but you know, the <laughs> week that we've had so far out here on the road, nothing would surprise me at this point. Um, how's it going, man? It's going good. Yeah, uh, going well, I should say. <laughs> All right. So you are uh I'm assuming Los Angeles based right yeah, now. Yeah, born and raised Los Angeles. I love it. But with the name like Willem and uh, Rock Royalty, like we do have, I, I don't know if I want to spill the beans just yet, but I might as well just spill the beans. Um, because looks just what, just just because of the, uh, you know, the bleach blonde hair I can, and then the facial structure. As soon as I say Billy Idol, there you go. Uh, son, son of uh, Rock Royalty, oh, I like that Billy photo. Idol, yeah. and uh, Perry Lister. And that is, that's very, now wait. Were you just born with the snarl? I mean, did right. it just I do it on with? the opposite. We do it on the opposite sides. Funny enough, it's you mirror each other. There it yeah, is. Yeah, because he does it on the left, and I can't do it on the left. So. <laughs> Can you? Yeah, uh, it's like winking on one eye or the other eye. Can you right. That? It's just hilarious that, of course, we're we're opposites, but yeah, we can both do it anyway. <laughs> well, it's, maybe it has something to do with the way it curves to the left or to the right. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Maybe if I was born in Australia, you know, I might be going the other way. You know, you know what? You weren't born in Australia, but no. you have you always been uh, West Coast and uh, Los Angeles based? Yeah, you know, um, as a little kid, we'd go back and forth from England uh, because that's where all of our family was. You know, oh my oh, God, yeah. these photos. This is too much. That's really yeah. yeah. It's a little bit like this is your life. Or, I you love this. I know that's just my, my <laughs> mom and I. I when I was little, it's very cute. Um, yeah, uh, you know, uh, would go back to England a lot growing up, just kind of in the summers and stuff like that. But always, uh, LA was always home, and um, so definitely always been LA based. And well, when you say that uh, as a little kid and uh, back in the day, I can only mean one thing: it's going back to get forward, and that's a little segment that we have. So why not do animation with it, huh, Vic? <laughs> A little cheesy, but hey, man, come on! I loved it. I love it. You gotta it. have sound effects. You, you, you had the glasses. We have the the uh, Harley Davidson. Yes, I'll do the practical shit. You guys give, hit me with some <laughs> graphics. Audio visual, baby. <laughs> I even brought a mic, um, even though it's not hooked up. Oh, that looks so pro, though. But we do not want to take away from that lovely mug of yours. There you go. That's the new look. <laughs> Screenshot it right now. <laughs> and again, if you're listening to us on audio broadcast, thank you very much. We appreciate that. But you're missing all the fun here on uh, YouTube official Ryan Roxy. There you go. You're right in the live chat. And uh, 
of course, we've got the RGA faithful there. Um, the name Willem Wolf, it sounds, it does sound a little bit like English royalty, Willem Wolf. Um, is it come from a lineage of, uh, has anything to do with your father's name, the name Willem? Right, yeah. So, uh, you know, my father was William and his father was William. And my mother just didn't want to have a William the third. And so, and she liked Willem Dafoe. And so she kind of merged the two together. And uh, and then Willem Wolf was born. And then she always called me Wolfie in her stomach. And so that became my my middle name. So Wolfie. I like yeah. it. That's with Wolf, but with an E at the end. Yeah, exactly. So that's very good. Well, your mom's always been a bit of a, a, an iconoclast, you know? Yeah. Uh, and Very she's uh, and, and uh, been underdog too. You know, she was, uh, you know, didn't didn't get what she was really due or something. You know what I mean? But she's been part of she's been part of uh, your dad's career intertwined for so many many years. In fact, even part of I think the first videos and stuff right that with White Wedding, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, and um, what what I what I want to sort of correlate and bring it sort of into your sphere and sort of your orbit is that uh, one of your first bands that you had together, FIM, mm -hmm. um, you had a, one of your first videos, which I was able to watch before we actually did some taping here, uh, called Almost Dead. Yeah. Had, had a bit of a white wedding video feel and was it was that unconscious uh, was that conscious? I think they did it uh, I think they probably did it a little bit on purpose. Um, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, like, God, I'm, I'm really blanking, but it was like, I think it was like Kenneth Anger's understudy or something like that, that, that did that video. Um, you know what? It's, it's so messed up to say like that was a long time ago and I can't remember, but <laughs> just on the spot right now, like shit, <laughs> I thought I was prepared um, for this interview. Like I didn't think about Fim almost dead and I probably haven't thought about that song since or something. So well, yeah, we all got the tattoos. God, we were insane. You did not think that we would have a producer slash stalker that would go <laughs> down these uh, YouTube rabbit holes and find all these uh, amazing uh, pictures and stuff like that. So no, it's fine. I, I think it might've been the, the baby picture with you and your mom that kind of might've just sort of set things off to begin with. for sure yeah and then that that tattoo photo it, it uh you know makes you realize like oh it's not a good idea to get a tattoo of your band it's kind of like the kiss of death you know really is it kind of like it. putting your girl yeah, yeah your, your girlfriend or your boyfriend's name when you tattoo you it's inevitable going yeah. to break up just stop <laughs> just stop halfway through it just stop <laughs> Johnny Depp, you could have told that to Winona and Johnny Depp a, 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 quite a while. And he might not be in court today. You never but know. You know what? Like, I kind of dig it. Even if you have a bad tattoo, like rock that bad tattoo in that time. Uh, instead of like getting it covered up, I don't understand that. I don't understand getting a tattoo removed or covered up, but that's worse. Like rock that that bad time in your life. You know, so you, you still you still have that as a as a feature piece, I would imagine. Exactly. Yeah. Still there. Uh, yeah. You know. Yeah, exactly. Let's talk about one of those first those early bands, um, because you do have some friends that you've had for a long time that you had many different associated uh, bands with FIM. The acronym right out of the gate. What does that stand for? So yeah, it was um, I dated this Brazilian girl. Um, shout out to Louisa. And uh, at the time, I was you know I don't know seventeen, eighteen, and she had these Brazilian porno pamphlets, and they were from the fifties or something like that. Um, and they were cartoons, and they were done by this guy that worked at the post office, and uh, he he was kind of like a a B artist, you know. He wasn't he couldn't really draw three D that well, and uh, whatever. And it was. I guess a time when porno wasn't as re readily available in Brazil and he would draw these little cartoons and sell them and, and copy them and make these copies. And she had a bunch and I thought they were fascinating because they would start out kind of normal. Like uh, the guy would, uh, you know, see a girl at the mall and he would say, Hey, do you want to go out to dinner? And then they'd go out to dinner. And then he like, before you know it, you turn the page and he's like injecting her with something and knocking her out. And like and I'm like and she's and she's uh you know translating it all for me and I'm just like what oh my god and then at the <laughs> end they'd both be in in bed like with a cigarette and it would say like fin and it means the end in in Portuguese uh -huh. it's like fin in French yeah. Yeah. Um, so so we just wanted um to, you know when in Rome you say fin but even in Portugal they do pronounce it fin uh, yeah. 
And there you go. Uh, they do speak Portuguese in Brazil. I love the whole thing. Yeah. We're international. And you did say it was going to be educational. You said it was going to be entertaining, but the podcast is also educational. You know, I can't help myself. I can't help it. <laughs> uh, Vic, do you have I any, am my, uh, my father's son. You know, he's a he's a total history buff and a, and a big dork, a big secret, uh, you know, uh, nerd. So does, does Billy Idol watch a lot of the History Channel, huh? I don't know about History Channel because that's probably you know doesn't have much history on it anymore. But like you know, he's a he's a real bookworm and um, and just a history buff, you know, for sure. Did that rub off on you? Obviously. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, reading and and just the the interest in in history and and stories and uh, things like that. You know, like okay, one time he let me skip school. Uh, and we watched the Zupruder film like over and over again. You know what I mean? So yeah, break it down. Well, dude, that's JFK. You, you break it down <laughs> frame by frame. Down well, into like the left. Documentary. It was some new down documentary. To... And now every time I see my pops, I'm always like, "Oh, is there a new theory?" And he's like, "Oh, now it's it's the you know." There's always a new fucking theory. So. Mm hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what the tinfoil hats. Uh, you know they are now very much in fashion you know yeah, the, R guess, the yeah, rf yeah. blocking the rf blocking 5g blocking caps and cloaks are definitely in fashion right now i'm telling you do you have them on your merch <laughs> <laughs> not yet but it's not a bad thing to brand you know <laughs> brian <laughs> roxy tinfoil hats that's kind of good <laughs> well you heard it here first. We won't make it tin foil because, I mean, we'll make it more stylish, but it'll have some sort of layer. I don't know. I can just see in the background our producer furiously uh, Googling for Brazilian porno pamphlets. And I have you had I any wonder. luck with that yet? You know? Yeah, I wonder. I wonder. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I, I do have a couple um, photos of them. We definitely got a lot of them scanned because the idea was to use them for shirts and stuff, but I, we never really did much. So, no, was. Was that one of the first bands you had put together? Because I know that uh, we had talked right before we started recording that um, my friend Slim Jim Phantom uh, from Stray Cats right. has a son named TJ, and uh, you and TJ are buds, and you've been in a in a few projects together. Was that uh, one of them, or what were the projects that you were involved with TJ in? Yeah, so TJ and I grew up playing music together. Um, so we were in so many of our first bands together, even before um, FIM had started. So in, in all throughout high school, um, I think we were in a band we named after our buddy Lucas. So we were called Lucas. Um, we, we had several names after that, different, uh, you know, reincarnations. Uh, I think we opened up for Heim like back in the day, but they weren't like big, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But that was that was a claim to fame. That's what we. That's what I would always say. But like, oh, we will be open for Heim one time. So, yeah. when did you, when did you decide like I'm gonna carry on in my father's footsteps and in my mother's footsteps? I'm I'm gonna use uh, music as my vehicle, my primary vehicle, because like you have um, also expanded in, into a lot of artwork as well. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But when do you think it was? I mean, because you were probably in the room without even knowing it. You were probably in the room with a lot of rock and rollers in a lot of different situations. Right. Maybe yeah. Rubbed off on you. Osmosis was. Uh, of course, it, it probably um, can't can't uh, help but do that. Just being around it and everything like that. Um, growing up a lot i grew up with my mother at my mother's house more and she had so much music there um it was always the house was a like a hotel and it was always filled with music and lots of other crap but uh but but there was always music going on and if it was uh the clash or if it was tom tom club or if it was chemical brothers or if it was jay dilla and some others you know it was, uh you know it was such a wild time in the 90s um of of lots of different kinds of music um from from crazy techno to you know other rock bands still going and whatever it was so yeah just lots of different types of music and my my neighbor had forced me to learn guitar and um and then yeah my pops taught me something like maybe like um dear prudence or something like that i think we did that you know so so it's funny that i think um being like you said rubbing off it because you're around it more so than my father actually like you know sitting me down um <clears throat> my father wanted me to like play baseball because 
which is so weird because he's English and like soccer would be the thing. But but we're in America, so went in Rome again, and uh, and and he wanted me to play baseball, and like uh, was was really pissed when. I didn't want to play baseball anymore because I was like starting to get girls playing music and stuff. And yeah. like, uh, you know, so it's always the girls really. It's why you do anything, you know, and bad things, good and bad things. Um, but, you know, so, uh, you know, yeah, like I wanted to quit and he, you know, it, it threw a fit because it was like, Oh, that was the last thing that him and I really did together was baseball. <laughs> but really, but, you, but you it was threw the ball around. It was like we could have done music together too, but it, I don't know. He was fixated on baseball, and when I didn't want to do that, it was all right. Fuck it, it's over. You know. So. Well, has there has there been any talk of you guys ever doing any sort of collaboration as far as music together? You know, for years, um, just kind of gone back and forth um, <clears throat> uh, about you know about that idea. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think of what I can say about it. You know, I don't know why. Why wouldn't we already have done it? I'll throw that out there. I don't know. Okay. Well, <laughs> but you're not, but the door isn't closed. Or exactly. Door right. Closed exactly. That. So, but, right. but yeah, that is a question. All right. I'll say never, I'll, I'll leave it under the never say never. Category right. Yeah. Because yeah, we never know. That. Yeah. All exactly. right. Well, let's be, let's, let's move on just oh, a little and bit. First, uh, oh. I wanted to say thank you for having me on, Ryan. You know. Oh no problem. You well, know, uh, you're you're a legend and a living legend, and um, Come you know, and you're you're rocking, and, and it's just really cool to uh, you know, music can bring people together, and it's it's awesome that we don't know each other at all, but we're just uh, willing to get together and have a conversation about music. So it's fun, you know, and art. So, dude, I I so appreciate that, and uh, that's what I want to get into your art because okay. one of the one of the relationships that you um have sort of um been mentored by or you can explain uh you know uh to our audience just what that relationship means to you and, ha and how it's influenced your artwork um shepherd ferry uh pretty much you will know him if you live in anywhere in los angeles or any any urban uh environment you will know his artwork plastered all over everything uh what would you say was the most famous piece uh, obey was it would it be the obama obey or was it would it or there you go. There's some pieces that uh, I think Vic Chalfon, our producer, says he actually has a piece of uh, Shepard Fairey artwork yeah. in his room, in his That's house. Right. I saw that. Yeah. And uh, I think now maybe uh, amongst, um, you know, uh, people and, and kids and stuff that that Obama poster would would definitely maybe uh, be up on the top of his most famous. But obviously to people that had had been uh, into street art uh, for years or even skating culture um you know would know him for uh, Andre the Giant and and a lot of uh that is true the yeah. early street art stuff as well so you know but he's he's been a you know activist and uh, he's been going uh, ever since 1989 so you know and he's worked with a lot of cool people so he's and he's a great dude really, really there's cool. one of them right there what is one of them? well what got you into street art and it is this the question of the chicken or the egg was it was it music first and then art or was art so or did they both sort of come at the same time yeah it's a, that is interesting but i think for me um you know you're growing up and you're you're drawn on your in class and uh you know so i was always like an artistic kid um and music and art was always kind of at the same time um but definitely did music more um and that's my buddy uh ha at happy algorithm who did that cover that's for my gastric remoulade volume two right there but uh yeah uh pd uh, he's a dope artist and he, he does a lot of my uh covers and stuff but yeah you know um so yeah drawing uh, growing up and um I think uh, music was way more my outlet. And then uh, I think I read 1984 and 9-11 had happened and um, a few things. I started learning about the Bilderberg group and started getting more political and wanted to and naively thought that uh, spray painting Henry Kissinger around Los Angeles with Bilderberg written underneath it would like change the world, you know, so. I wanted to change the world. Explain that. Is is was that was that you that did that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So I was I, I went around LA for for a little while spray painting Henry Kissinger and Bilderberg underneath, but never really took off. And 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 also I just didn't uh, give it enough time. You know, it takes a lot of energy and time, street art, to really get something to stick. But uh, but yeah, I was just uh, kind of obsessed with 
uh, the power structure of the world. You know, I was turning 18, 19 years old and thinking about um, reality more and uh, and growing and growing up in the city and just seeing uh, life um, really wealthy people right next to really, uh, you know, completely homeless with nothing um, all side by side simultaneously 24 hours a day. So yeah. and, and you're uh, seeing it more and more every uh, especially on this tour Willem, that I'm on right now with as we do, we just hit the north uh, west. So we hit Portland, Seattle, and now we're, we're heading down to Los Angeles in, in just about a week or so. But uh, the thing is, the disparity of, between wealth and poverty, you're seeing in the, in the uh, cities probably, it, maybe it's all cyclical, but I haven't seen it in my lifetime with this much. Of right, because they disparity. said like LA hasn't been this bad since like the 80s crack. Yeah. epidemic but then you actually look at it and because of population and everything this is like 10 times worse than the 80s crack epidemic like the 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 the, the homeless is like you know normal areas in hollywood just under every uh you know freeway pass there's like these little tent cities and uh if mm -hmm. that doesn't show you that uh, we're not m managing resources properly and we're not caring about humanity uh, you know, I don't know where this money's going. Oh, wait, like any good detective, you just follow the money. It's going to the DOD. You know what I'm saying? All of our money is going to like black projects that are just disappearing. And it's not like, uh, and I'm not trying to get too, uh, you know, a conspiracy, but it's not, it's not a mystery. And it's not something that's even a conspiracy. It's in the books. You know, you got Donald Rumsfeld, like right before 9-11, like, yeah, we don't know where this money's going. You know, the, we don't, we really don't. We have no idea. And then we're, we got people starving everywhere. So you're like, maybe if we could just use some of that money and funnel it into starving people, that'd be good, you know? Uh, you know what? It starts somewhere. It starts with action. It starts with some sort. Maybe it starts with some kid, you know, spray painting Henry Kissinger all you around go, Los know? Angeles, sparking That's awareness. Good, yeah. Because now you already have some very um, – structured ideas about what you and how you want to change things um i'm wondering how yeah. when shepherd hey there it is vix yeah. found it um <laughs> when shepherd came around uh shepherd ferry to and and i don't know if using the word mentoring is right but when he yeah. when you guys struck up your your relationship did he, he approach you you approach him how did that all work out yeah so um uh so i met him when i was a little kid uh definitely when he had worked on my pops's album cover and tour i think it was the best of greatest hits something like that and Except the uh, album and then, cover that vic put up yeah i think it was yeah, the album then, cover that vic just put up right yeah and then like years later it was his birthday and uh my pop said hey do you want to go to shepherd's birthday and i said yeah and i i pulled what i call a bernath um which is uh my buddy who like really is good at showing his art to people he just has it on his phone and shows it in their face and i i just basically did that to shepherd i went up to him i was like hey check this out and he's like whoa and uh i didn't even realize it at the time but he said you do exactly what i do you collage and then you stencil on top of it and i said oh yeah all right that, that's cool and he said uh, you would do really good apprenticing at my shop or at the at the studio and so i kind of came in uh, some day in 2017 and then um, I have steadily worked on and off for him and uh, mainly, yeah, doing lot, the murals and street art and stuff like that. Uh, and, what uh, do you call, what do you call that thing that you do again? The uh, barrage or, 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 the, 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 the move that you did to show him the artwork. Oh, it's a, yeah. Cause my buddy's name's Bernath. It's a Bernath. Yeah. Pulling a Bernath. A Bernath. Okay, yeah. cool. I'm, I'm, I should start Bernathing. <laughs> no, totally. Can... Yeah. Just you're like, Hey man, here's our new single. And you just show, it, you, shove your headphones on someone's head you know <laughs> that's better dude that's the way to do it it's better than a business card it's for yeah, yeah. exactly it's for <laughs> we, we 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 need to try and get our podcast with more viewers i'm just how do i burn that yeah know? this is great i love how the he's gonna spread a whole a whole you know new <laughs> way across the internet here <laughs> so you've got art going on as is a is a good facet one sort of avenue that you're that you're rolling down but you also are got another foot uh well in music and um you mentioned some bands a little bit earlier that um pretty much typify the spectrum of music that you're in because i got an indie vibe uh when i listened to earlier stuff and then there's then it moves more over to dance techno yeah. uh, 
you know, um, maybe touching on a little EDM. I'm not sure, yeah, but not sure. Uh, um, I want to talk a little bit about a band that came, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it came a little bit after FIM, but in, in maybe it's currently happening. But uh, what's happening with the project that you have uh, with one of your good friends, Brandon? Um, Brouch, is yes. It, Brouch. Is it Brouch? Is, is, is yeah. it Jugs? And yeah, uh, yeah. So let's talk about that and how that formed and, and what's happening with the current status of that. Yeah, so FIM uh, ended out of just um, – the two other people that were in it got pretty busy in life. One had a kid and then the other just, you know, busy doing things. And so, uh, but Brandon and I kept making music. And so we were like, what are we going to call this side project that ended up turning into our main project for a while? But yeah, it was, uh, uh, and he said, I always wanted to call a band jugs. And so we just were like done right there, you know? And, um, <laughs> and, so, and we, uh, we used the English magazines logo a little bit. Um, and, um, yeah, you and know, in the English magazine you're talking about is obviously jugs. Yes, the jugs magazine. I mean, yeah. I only know it from 7-Elevens, you know, around the world back when. Right, it's such a classic, be... <laughs> silly-looking magazine that is just brilliant. But, uh, but anyway, yeah. So we did that for a while, and I think um, I was in a, a messed up place in my life, and I think. I kind of just ended it really it, not even on purpose. You know what I mean? Like he, mm. he was just done working with me and it was actually like, um, I'm trying to think if it's the words reasonable or, or what, but, uh, he, he just didn't want to put up with me anymore. I think <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Uh, yeah. I'm uh, sure. I don't know how he would put it, and I can't speak for him, but I'm I'm saying how I felt, you know. So that's uh, is yeah. the is the pro proper politically proper way to say it is you were struggling with your demons, or were you just fucking yeah, you know, yeah. for sure. Um, like so now I have all these words uh, because I've been like really working on myself and stuff like words like codependency and uh, you know alcoholism and um, <laughs> <laughs> lots of other things that. Uh, you know, that I've really kind of tackled in the past uh, six months of my life, you know. Um, but yeah, like, I just think he was done making music with me. That's a really good way to, mm -hmm. way to do it. You know, we'd made music for so many years and uh, it was time for him to move on. And uh, now he plays with um, Xander Sloss in the Circle Jerk or uh, the version the, of. Uh, yeah, uh, his solo stuff, Xander Sloss from the Circle Jerks so solo projects. So, and I, I know Brandon does other other bands as well too. So um, everyone should uh, look out for what he's doing as well. You know. Well, it, it sounds good to hear that uh, you are, you know, working with with your things because I always yeah. say every, everybody's got their something. Um, yeah. Everybody's gone through their something. Everybody's gone through their uh, struggles. Hopefully we make it out the other end a little bit wiser in the words of Willy, Willy Wonka. But yeah, I, feel really. that, I, I feel that, you know, in the Gene Wilder Willy Wonka, obviously. Yeah, I yeah. Feel, I feel that life is, is like a tour through the Wonka chocolate factory and hopefully you make it out at the other end maybe just a little bit wiser and you might get that you know that's brilliant week. because um you know i was reading a bit of jordan peterson and stuff and uh yeah. he was talking about this russian writer stolitsin whatever and he had gone through the gulags and seen horrible shit and still chose to instead of just be bitter and hate his life he chose to write a book and change the world for the better um so yeah. even though he had hitler and you know whoever else you know messing with his life uh so you know um uh, exactly you either choose to uh do something about it or you can just sit and complain and curse existence itself which it just seems futile and uh and uh, like a hamster wheel so yeah well jordan's been on the podcast before uh no we way are, yeah yeah we were that was one of my he was my white whale to get on the podcast and, and, and we got him and, and I got to thank the entire in the trenches team because it turns out he was like a huge fan of that album. Welcome to my nightmare by Alice Cooper, who I'm playing oh, yeah. with. Yeah. And so he, you know, that was the end. That was the door. But then everything came after that. We had a brilliant talk and uh, you know, yeah, you don't have to, you, you, there's no one that has to sell me on Jordan. Uh, very, very smart guy. I'm reading um, 12 rules right now. The first one. So yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's, 
it's tough, man. These intellectuals are out there. There's a lot of smart, smart thinkers out there. And um, you kind of wonder where, you know, how they can influence where we're at right now. Because I kind of look up to a lot of these intellectuals as like, hey, come on, you're the voice now. How do we get certain things a little bit more in perspective? Because you all see what's going on in yeah. politics and you see the, you know, family lineage leaning on and, and at generation after generation just getting, you know, staying in there. You know, things like term limits on uh, on Congress and 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 just just something that simple could clean out a lot of the mess. But, you know. So. Yeah. No, I mean, um, I totally get you. I think it starts with the people keeping their minds open. You know, I think everyone wants to be right instead of uh, just keeping your mind open. You know, the, there's a left and right paradigm and it's totally to, to uh, separate people because the, we vote, the, the greatest things humanity's ever done is when we came together. And so the way to not keep us together is by having a left and a right and everything. And so everyone's yeah. stuck on ideologies and they won't, ever have a conversation with each other like i can't even mention certain people's names without people running out of the room i i, I my yeah. manager uh jordan's for, uh, one of them some for, for some people oh, yeah, oh like, my god he's no, a, you're he's a, a nazi hot button yeah you're a nazi history. all of a sudden you might as well be a nazi <laughs> if you say jordan peterson in a, in a certain room which is like so uh backwards because it's just it's just uh not the case uh, you asked anyway, that same person have you ever you know. listened to anything more than the uh 20 second sound bite that was that was completely taken out of context no oh <laughs> yeah exactly okay, right yeah sound bites are really good a way to judge people off of but yeah you know like a, a manager of jugs you know um i i mentioned uh david ike or something um, and it was all, you know, and I'm not going to get crazy on anything, but whatever. I mentioned David Ike and he's like, that's it. I can't even talk to you anymore. And I was like, fuck, you know, I can't even say a writer's name. And I know David Ike is a bit out there. Sure. But I can't even say his name without, you know, a conversation yeah. being ended, you know? No, so. no, no. I, I think that that whole lack of having an actual proper conversation, actual proper discourse is, is, is sorely missing. So I, I do look up to guys. Um, who else? Um, Russell Brand. I look yeah. up to him because oh, he's, he's open to have the conversation, you yeah. know, and, he, and he's and looking at two sides of, of every story and stuff. So, I mean, yeah. but I was thinking, you know, keeping that mind open and stuff. Uh, two of your bands have been literally named after something to do with porno, FIM and uh, right. you right. know, like, <laughs> pornographic institutions, whether, yeah. whether it be Brazilian porno pamphlets or the iconic... <laughs> What what would be your next project? Do you think then? Right, exactly. That's funny. <laughs> um, uh, well, I think the reason for that too is my dad, uh, pops, always said, uh, "You you make music for girls, you know, because um, you don't want a uh, a bunch of dudes, um, only dudes at the show." And if you make music for chicks, they'll bring their boyfriends, so they'll still be guys at the show. But it, it, guys will be, come. Yeah, yeah. I, I think if, if and you that's build why uh, I never made dubstep or drum and bass. But I like some drum and bass and dubstep. But it's just like all dudes at the show, you know. <laughs> <laughs> is that you at one of your earlier shows, or is that? <laughs> yeah, that's me at at my. Uh, I'll call that a house party. That's what I'm <laughs> Literally a house party. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so what is uh? the current state because of both your art world and your music world are you combining the two of them i mean it, it, nfts is a is a is a cool way to maybe combine both worlds have you even thought about that uh sort of collaboration or or what's, no, what's definitely the state? um of course uh you know the NFT world is so crazy to even begin talking about it, right? Like, so yeah, I've yeah. definitely thought about that kind of stuff, but uh, and and definitely integrate art and my music, being that like, oh, you have covers or uh, of of singles or albums, and you can do stuff or logos and stuff like that. So um, definitely incorporate it all together, um, you know, in, in that way. But. Uh, yeah, and then like like right now, one of my current projects is a secret side project that uh, I don't associate with my name um, because I I just don't want it to have anything to do with Billy Idol or or just you yeah. know just I want it to have its own world um, and so and that's getting some traction on YouTube on like some certain 
electronic kind of music channels and stuff and so like i i make videos for the releases of those tracks um so the video but they, are, but they don't know the face be, they don't know the face behind the music it's, it's on, on that project but then i also make uh the videos for willem wolf music so it's you know kind of electronic uh yeah occupy space that was an old uh single of a buddy and i stuff and yeah that's a, you know so photography um i definitely do a bit of that a bit of videography video editing a bit of artwork, uh, painting, yeah, um, a little bit of it all, I suppose. What is that? Uh, you know, jack of all trades, master of none. You know. Um, well, sure. but you know sure. what? I think with today's technology, you can get pretty close to being pretty damn good. Yeah. At, if you just take a little bit of time yeah. and, and work on it, and it seems like you're doing that right now. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of time out and put a quick commercial break right in there because we do got to pay the bills one way or another. Oh, yeah. Vic Chalfont, our um, illustrious producer, I'm going to give you the uh, honor of picking today's commercial. Hit it now. Come on. Hello, Roxy Guitar Army. For those of you that have been faithfully following the podcast, you may have noticed that recently I've been changing up my eyewear from week to week. And today we are happy to announce that Click Eyewear is now an official sponsor of the In the Trenches podcast. They've even given us a special discount code that we can now pass on to our supporters. Click has provided me with both readers and blue blocker protection eyewear that are durable, stylish, and convenient. What sets them apart from the rest of the reader world? The catch is in the click. They are the world's first magnetic reader, which makes them hard to lose and even harder to break. If you're interested in getting a pair or two of your own, check out the discount link located in the description. Never lose your readers again, because with Click Eyewear, they're always around you. Now let's get back into the trenches and back to some more rock and roll. What the hell is on that guy's face? Uh, it kinda, it's so weird when you have different types of beers. I, I actually just shaved just this last week. So I, I had been getting my, uh, you know, get, are you able to grow the full on thing? And have you ever, or you just kind of. I was talking about this the other day with a buddy of mine. Uh, my beard sucks. So does my dad's beard. We're not really beard people. I mean, it's all right. Mine's is better than my pops. And my chest hair is like way more than my pops. Like his is like kind of <laughs> patchy and patchy and lame. But I mean, it's also like. That's why he's always like, you know, uh, got the shaved chest thing going on. And he's, uh, he's always mm. had a better body than me. Like, I think right now he's probably got a better body than me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fuck up. He's like fucking twice my age and he looks better. You know, it's just wrong. Does he work at it? Is, is he, play, is he yeah. playing a lot of baseball or does he actually go? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think uh, Pilates. I think that's the. Oh, all right. All that's right. the way, you know, because it's less impact. You know what I mean? So. Oh, do you do you remember going on tour? Um, by the way, folks, thank yeah. you uh, for coming back for uh, a little bit more of In the Trenches. Uh, we have our guest Willem Wolf, uh, musician, artist, and uh, you know what, political activist. I, I would say you're going to allow it, allow Andrea, it. You know, <laughs> speak it. And uh, truth seeker, how about that? Yeah. You know? That's brilliant. Like you already know me. Like, look at that. Fucking 30 minutes. <laughs> Truth seeker. It's, it's, it's my uh, it's my secret weapon of what That's I do. Awesome. But we're in the trenches. Um, join us on YouTube official uh, Ryan Roxy official every single week. And um, well, you know what? We don't have an official guest next week book, but I have something in the works. That's why we're heading. Um, that's why we are actually uh, heading to end the tour in Los Angeles. Then I'll have a Los Angeles based guest. Uh, folks, stay right. tuned for that. But uh, every week we have a fan of the week. And this week is no different. We have two weeks running in a row. We have Mr. Dean Staffieri as our fan of the week. So there, very quick shout out to Dean because. <laughs> Next week will be very special. We'll have a brand new fan of the week. So two weeks running, Dean Staffieri. Oh, uh, again, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, let's get into a couple of things uh, that might be corny, might be cool. I'm not sure um, because I've never asked anyone um, that – has an art background and a music background about the one that got away. But, you know, I mm. do this mostly because I feel that this animation has a little bit of a TJ vibe in it, your friend. So let's play the one that got away.
A little bit, TJ? It's a tiny bit? I'm not sure. <laughs> Hilarious. The one that got away there. All right. Well, the one that got away is about um, basically a piece of equipment, uh, something that meant a lot to you that you either had to sell, got oh, lost. This is easy, yeah. This was easy. stolen. Yeah. was something that you wish you had back in this day, but you don't anymore. What is your one that got away? So I borrowed a guitar from my dad, and I don't know why Pops would ever, ever lend this guitar to your child. <laughs> it's like Which one? it's like giving the 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 Babe Ruth baseball um, to the kid to go play baseball with. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so my Pops was in the hospital. He had broken his leg um, doing a uh, you know riding his motorcycle, right? And it was a huge accident in his life almost lost his leg and everything like that and wow. uh george harrison signed a guitar and gave it to him and uh, my pops lent it to me at some point in my guitar playing days and someone stole it oh oh yeah. was it one of the was it one of those uh like sort of late night after party jam sessions at willem's house where someone just kind of you know <laughs> you know what that i wish it was so innocent i wish that was as uh, that would that would have been i wish i hope that is how it went <laughs> well you just have no idea it was, well, yeah, it was I, hope it, I hope it wasn't to the pawn shop to score some drugs or something like that you know uh, it's probably more likely but you never know <laughs> and what kind do you remember what kind of guitar was it acoustic uh, it was an electric guitar and it had a really strange um it was basically a, like a white body but it had this like strange pattern of kind of collagey strangeness on it i really couldn't even tell you it was really weird guitar um Kind of like a Les Paul Jr. body, but anyway. Yeah. It was George Harrison, the Beatles Signed sort it. of signature. Yeah. Was it was it pretty really would it be small. something? Okay, so it could have been something that was just stolen and somebody. Oh just yeah, said, they hey. probably had no idea. They had no idea. Yeah, probably had oh. no idea. <laughs> so right now, if you're yeah. if you're sitting there at your house and you <laughs> and you have this little Les Paul Jr. type guitar, you might want to check it for any signatures that might be on it because that could be yeah, signed right by a Beatle, here, right owned by Billy there, Idol, yeah. loaned to William Wolf, and then lost off the planet. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's but your that, one that got away. That's okay. definitely that's definitely the one that got away for sure. Yeah. I thought it was going to be some sort of spray paint stencil or something like that. It was like, man, like Kissinger stencil. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. Oh, man. You can make a stencil again. You know, you can't make that guitar again. You know, so. That is true. That is true. Do you remember? I mean, hold on one second. I usually pride people in telling them to take their, their phones off and uh, <laughs> not buzzing. But there it is. It's hard it's taking your own advice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's what you get. That's what you get when you're at the Courtyard Marriott. When you're a popular guy. <laughs> <laughs> no. we're, we're, yeah. we're working our way. Again, I told the folks in the live chat right now, thanks for being a part of it each and every week. But we're working our way um, to end leg one of this tour. And then we're going out uh, in Europe. And we're starting in the UK in just, uh, in just uh, three or four weeks. And we'll be out there with the cult. So that'll be uh, Alice Cooper and the cult. And then all across Europe um, with other bands. Have you been able to go out on tour yet uh, with any of the bands that you're in? Are you looking forward to that? Is it something that you'd want to do? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, um, we've done small stints. We went to South by uh, stuff like that, but um, you know, never did like a full American leg or anything like that. I've done it uh, as a kid with my pops, you know, working on the, you know, with, with the, with the rest of the crew, but um so yeah, your dad, yeah. So your dad got you hired in on the crew. What did you do? And because uh, I'm always curious about that, because I remember uh, we toured with Motley Crue for uh, for a while, and Mick Mars had his son doing guitar teching. Right. What, what What was your job? Yeah, it was cool. I did a little bit of everything. Like, so one show I would do guitar teching. Next show I do front of house. Uh, I did like a little bit of each, you know, and just kind of uh, exactly uh, just watched and and helped out in any way I could. But it was more to learn each little little bit and then uh, i think shortly after that i started working at uh, the village recorder when i was about 19 which is a studio in la oh, yeah i know um, that place yeah village recorder and uh worked for yeah i was worked there for jeff greenberg um for like maybe a year and a bit and then um and then yeah that was definitely another learning you know um learning uh 
time of my life of uh, all this gear and knowledge and uh, producing and uh, you know just I mean I was a, I was a runner at the village but I getting coffee but you still learned a lot you know so yeah I worked the midnight shift over at Cherokee Studios when I first moved to LA so I used yeah, to basically the, I did the my, late night I did the late night shift yeah. and uh, we it would be from five in the afternoon and it could be until nine the next morning and uh, mm -hmm. I remember Nelly came in the studio and they were just they, they would just smoke tons of weed and uh and then and then like five hours later like do a vocal you know but it was like right, just mainly right. smoking weed you know and then, and then five hours later do a vocal and i just had to sit there and watch the front of house so i just ended up learning like apex twins avril 14th or something you know like <laughs> watching yeah. some get on youtube and then i would just like yeah that's, that's that's what I did Pretty my much my my job was to uh, clean up the cocaine dust from most of the actual uh, machines and stuff like that when most of the uh, 80s bands were playing. It was, it was about the time of, uh, you know, Motley Crue in their heyday it was recording there, other bands like Crocus and stuff like that. So I remember, yeah, those late night shifts. It was quite fun. Um, Very cool. Question, uh, being that you both, uh, that you have – parents that are both uh, considered rock royalty, I would say, you know, your dad and your mom uh, both have uh, pretty big notoriety. Being a child of uh, famous people, blessing or a curse? Yeah, it's a, I love this one because, um, and obviously I think everything's yin and yang, so it's a bit of both. Um, yeah. And I've been thinking about that as uh, even as a bigger question. And then I, I started thinking about how if yin and yang is real and reality is like 50 50. And if you look at that on like a test score, like that's failing. So it is reality, it? reality is really failing right now. But I guess that's why in Buddhism, like life is pain. And I think that's what it that's what they mean is that reality is failing. Like it's 50 percent. So you got to so you're saying it you're saying complete balance is fucking failing. Ouch. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, like, well, I mean. <laughs> that would be good if maybe if i didn't live so much in the dark side that's where i'm trying to get out of yeah exactly but no um so it, you know is it a curse or a, a blessing just like uh life um it's 50 50 so it's good and it's bad um it's it's good because uh maybe you got a, a leg up on um others because immediately you can have some type of um, promotion of sorts, but then it can be a bad thing as well, because then um, you're stuck with that and you can't ever really uh, get out from that unless you, yeah. you kind of do a secret thing, you know, cause uh, <clears throat> humanity is funny and, and I, I don't even uh, blame it um, uh, for being like this, but you know, we can't help, but um, you know, uh, want to so know, want to know exactly and want to know the the story behind an artist and um and then after that associate them in a in a different way once you find out whatever you found out about them if it's if their parents somebody if they're something else whatever it is you know so everyone wants to hear the story right yeah yeah and i feel like um that's fine but i also feel like art can be um taint, tainted with uh, too much uh, politics and stuff and art is just that it's just something to be observed and to enjoy or to hate you know whatever it is but uh you know it's 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 just something to created to to be observed so uh, you know beyond that it's it's all just um a game beyond the i love creating art and i love making uh, if it's a piece if it's music if it's whatever the creating process is great then selling it and you're the son of someone or you're not or who are you or do you look cool what kind of pants do you wear do you wear eyeliner do you wear tight shirts are you gay are you straight are you trans are you this are you they what pronouns do you use for god forbid you use the wrong one uh, you know whatever it is you know so like yeah uh you know it, it's a it, it is it a blessing or a curse it's both gotcha gotcha <laughs> i'll take that hey uh, Vic, you put up an art, a piece of art uh, that was on a circular thing. It had sort of a California vibe with a palm tree. Right. That art right there. Now, you were saying earlier that uh, part of your, uh, a lot of your art, you have some buds do work on, but do you work on some of the artwork for your own stuff as well? Yeah, exactly. Like that was, uh, that's like an old record company's uh, logo, you know, so it's a little bit of like culture jamming there or, uh, 
or um, ripping someone off, uh, if you will. Is that but, Island uh, Records? Is by is that yeah like, something? You know what I mean? I just it, it has it has a vibe yeah. of Island Records, but at the same time, it has like sort of its uh, it has a nice California feel to it as well. Definitely, yeah, Islandy or something. But yeah, um, yeah, definitely, I'll do um, my own cover stuff, or I get a buddy uh, to do it. Like sometimes I just do cheap, cheesy things like that, and I, I kind of like. Um, uh lowbrow art or uh you know cheap art you know so um yeah like i i made that you know just because um that's that's where i was at you know i don't even take the day i don't even take ambient but uh (laughs) never have never have go back to that picture vic because a lot i think vic has the he has the attention span of 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 a very young tiktok (laughs) audience right now i'm telling you and he's not even even on tiktok but we are on tiktok (laughs) i i i i I don't know if I'm proud to admit that or not, but Federico oh, okay. is in charge of that thing. But go back to that Reach picture one audience, more time. You know, uh, yeah. Take eight tracks a day by ear every day. See, it's, yeah. those are the it's the subtleties that I love. And, yeah, and I yeah, like uh, and the the title itself. Um, I felt uh, that when I was making that, it was definitely during the pandemic, but uh, it was. Um, just about how we're in a drug induced uh, sleep and i didn't mean it so much in in pill form but like it could be caffeine it could be the news it could be whatever it is your ego and all this stuff but we're an addicted society that uh is basically asleep on ambient and we're in our own uh not just some type of cell but it's like a dungeon it's like a self-tortured dungeon so that's where like the title rea- reality has become no reality th- the thing that I'm into, and and I've, I've told very few people about reality transurfing and all that kind of stuff, but one of the uh, one of the points is that we are in real life. It's almost like most people are sleeping in reality, and you know, yeah, and I know, was for a while too, even though I was a, a pretty um, you know uh, awake individual. Um, as far as uh, you know, politics and, and, and the world goes, at least you know I figured. But still, in my own personal life, I was still very much asleep. And uh, yeah, and, and it's amazing that 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 can be a thing. You know, so. are you are you able to talk with these uh, with these heavy subjects? And because obviously sometimes your your head can get uh, filled dark thoughts, a lot of thoughts. Um, these totally. Days. Are, are you are you able to talk? And, and uh, with these types of issues with your parents, or just, do you still feel there's a, a a gap there because they are your parents? Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, you know, parents are tough, right? Um, so I, I, I think I try sometimes to talk with my mom, but my my mom is uh, just sick of hearing uh, me bullshit or or about my ex girlfriend. And uh, mm. so if I call my mom and I'm like at all down about anything in the past it, it, she's just like oh fucking hell will i'm fucking hell <laughs> and i'm just like okay i can't and then i it's yeah so there she is, there she is being nice to me but uh but you know what i think she does she's she's only doing that because she's just you know so sick of uh hearing me go on about uh somebody that didn't care about me anyway so you know what i mean so she's just going will them wake up you know so mm, mm, so mm. it's hard to, it's hard to talk to them though for sure i and i don't mm. i don't talk to my pops about uh, problems really so we uh, if no. anything i i just call them and, and uh joke around about things you know all right all right fair <laughs> enough yeah fair enough now what what is it, the social media world for you like getting uh spreading your music getting your music out there getting your artwork out there is it that important for you on social media or or do you kind of want to keep it on the more down low and have people just discover it yeah well you know you're doing this podcast so obviously we're talking about things about your so people after watching it they're going to go check out you know everyone that's in the chat now is going to go check out your stuff which those are the links that we have available for you right now um are there any sort of you know they want to go down a little bit more the William Wolf, Willem Wolf uh, rabbit hole where they can go there. Can they start there and go deeper down or. Yeah. I suppose Instagram just cause it's got my link tree. So it's got my YouTube, um, you know, in the past uh, two years um, I put out gastric remoulade volume one and volume two, which is like a Jay Dilla uh, beats inspired um, kind of uh, hip hop. Um, 
all samples on vinyl and and, and kind of uh, cool stuff and then uh a more techno um ambient thing with ambient dungeon and uh and so all that stuff will be on youtube or Bandcamp as well but <clears throat> all the links are there on my link tree on, on the uh on instagram and um yeah. yeah i guess like what other things so like uh i guess i should drop this now but yeah um yeah. i'll be releasing something on this uh record label called mason fauna and they're based out of north carolina um durham i believe and uh, they're really great they, they've been putting out um awesome artists and i'm real happy that they're they're down to release some of my stuff I've already released uh, one track um, that was off that Ambient Dungeon. Um, I think the track was Ambient Palooza. That was the one they released. And um, yeah, they we got a they have a festival they're putting together, which I believe um, will be in North Carolina called Slingshot Fest. I think, nice. I think there's two. I think there's one in May and one in October. Um, a bit hazy on um, exactly uh, the dates and stuff. But yeah, you know, just excited to be releasing stuff with them and um well speaking of that yeah, if yeah. you if you had your own choice if you had if, 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 if it was your sort of call to make for one of those days at, at slingshot festival or or, or Lollapalooza yeah. or any of those and you could fit your bands in with some other bands what would be sort of a great you know three or four band bill that you would like to see yourself on as well yeah i mean shit. uh because you mentioned the clash earlier and, and this could be bands that are defunct now or yeah. you know or have passed away Man, or... i mean wow what a, what a cool question <laughs> like like if this is really like um the coolest uh set list of all time including some bands that i'm in or something yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> i mean okay then you got parliament funkadelic they must they probably finish off the night right we'll we'll start off we'll start yeah. backwards we'll start backwards they finish sure. off the night um i mean all night long yeah, Prince comes down from heaven and plays <laughs> <Perfect. laughs> uh, we right before them. You know, uh, we just got to see it. We just did a private tour of Paisley Park uh, on this tour. We were able to go there in and see the whole Paisley Park facility. Cool. It was it was such a cool experience. But yeah, wow. uh, Parliament Prince is in there. Yeah, Prince, uh, um, and then I, I'm in this new group right now, and I, I did want to mention that with TJ. I got uh, TJ playing drums in it. It's kind of like alternative rock stuff. Um, it's really new, um, but it's um, so we're just kind of getting it going. But it's called Drifter. That's D R I F T R. And I'm um, trying to think. I'm trying to think of how pornograph pornography. Yeah, right. Yeah, Drifter. <laughs> well, I didn't. I'm not the uh, songwriter really on this one, and not the. Gotcha it's not my baby but we're just in it and we're we're all kind of starting to write together now a little bit i think so so drifters so drifters something that that's sort of on the horizon and right now. yes yeah. exactly yeah it's, a, right. it's early days you know and then nice. um yeah and then i i do uh house music with a buddy uh maddie and we're called ground score so it's g-r-n-d s-c-r-e you got a lot of stuff going on will I'm yeah yeah it's you, true. Man. It's true. I, I I spread myself thin, and then um also it's like part of my uh you know uh, ADD uh you know I, I I I always had it, and and you know they tried to shove me on like Ritalin, uh, basically giving me pharmaceutical speed as a young child, and then right. uh, and then I like you know would throw that away and stopped uh, taking it, so just kind of like uh, pretended like I didn't have ADD for years. But then like recently, I'm like you know I talked to people and I'm like no, you have severe ADD. I'm like oh okay. I did want to uh, preface the whole show with that, but see, that's how my brain works. So I, I'm doing it at the end. I should have been like, oh, see, you're on uh, the podcast today with someone that's heavily, severely ADD. Mm -hmm. so. well, the, you <laughs> the know what? Go They've like watched that. the whole podcast, and now for them, to, for you to drop that at the very end, they're going to go, oh, <laughs> see? Yeah, it, it's, it's, maybe maybe it's not so uh, you know, shocking for them. It's the same way that you put the uh, the festival, this fantasy festival lineup together. You put Parliament in there, you put Prince in there, and then you mentioned a few of your bands that would be yeah. spliced in between. And that would uh, be great. Yeah, that would be great if they, we opened up for the crazy headliner, and that would be it. You know, would uh, you have any rock bands, any guitar driven bands that would be on that bill as well? Oh God! Well, you're in. It's funny. Well, for some reason, when just when I think of that, I don't know why my brain goes to this this English band Whitey. Um, but they, you know, it's kind of rock. It's not necessarily guitar driven. It's more like beat driven. But it is, 
it's it's you know it's got some dope guitar shit in there some bass as, as well but yeah uh whitey um really, Very nice. really the the album was called there might leave the first one was great it was called the uh, light at the end of the tunnel is a train that one's really a killer <clears throat> oh and i did want to mention um doing some tracks with a buddy um his name's colin jameson that's j-a-m-i-e-s-o-n colin jameson and uh it, we're doing some kind of really cool like pop um stuff he's like a, he's a singer and um so i'm kind of we're kind of writing together for for his <laughs> his solo stuff so you know you know it's funny when we're doing it when we're doing the script and federica's helping us out with the script we're going for all this information we're getting yeah your you know your father's billy uh your mom's yeah. Barry lister and on the internet we're really trying to come up with stuff then in about like a space of five minutes you just <laughs> unleash like about five or six different <laughs> projects that it's you have insane. in the works right now that we have to find out but maybe this is all going to be stuff that's coming out our exclusives and uh people you know go on show up those lists of links one more time vic for willem and uh, you can start there and then go down the willem wolf rabbit hole if you can put on those links right there that's instagram facebook and your own soundcloud willem wolf um and I'll definitely send you over any other links like um, about any of the stuff we talked about, like Maison Fauna, the label I'm on, and and that way anybody can follow them and, and see when the festivals are going on and stuff. So that's the Slingshot Festival. Are you, do you are, do you actually have a shot at being on Slingshot? Yeah, but that's what they that's why they uh, that's why I even mentioned it because uh, that's what they're gonna have me play um, at some point, maybe May or October or both. So excellent, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know what. I will, we'll do we'll do a quick catch up sometime during that time because uh, be awesome. we're going to be touring on and off. I'm glad that we were able to to talk and meet and sort of uh, you know different generations we come through. I'm I'm just you know maybe a couple of years here or there uh, from your dad's generation, but not right. really because I mean come on I mean I was right there with yeah. the, with the start of MTV and. Um, but it's great to see that there is like this uh, complete like bond with the old school and the new school. And like I said, yeah. from the beginning of the podcast, you are the new school um, and best of luck with taking uh, music, all the different types of music you're doing, plus your artwork and uh getting it out there and spreading it out yeah and, dude, and uh, can... just, uh you know thank you so much for having me on and i i did want to do this like we're not worthy ah Please come on now suck. Suck. <laughs> i just had to do it from wayne's world dude it's fucking classic but um oh man it's so uh, the coattails baby we all yeah. ride somebody's coattails we all got everybody's got their something and uh guess what you guys have had another uh episode of in the trenches uh very special to have our guest willem wolf on um i didn't know what to expect when we first came on but uh thank you very much bud um i guess like i'll end every single podcast um and i know that you're come from the new school but uh is there a quote maybe your dad gave you some advice that you'd like to pass on or even all the life experiences you've been under right, so yeah. far in life uh maybe your mom perry gave you some advice maybe your dad or maybe you just earned it on your own any uh sort of life advice you can give on to our listeners you know the classic my mom just sent me this card and i'll say i'll say two different i'll say a quote from my mom and then one from you know my pops so my mom's would be uh, when one door uh closes another door opens and then you might just get another door slammed in your face. That's what. <laughs> and then my pops, uh, when asked when he was leaving rehab one time, Billy, Billy, what about your drug problem? And he said, what problem? I have the money now. So <laughs> There you go. So that's what I'll end with. There. <laughs> well, Willem, thanks a lot for being in the trenches, everybody. Thank Next you. week, our mystery guest will be decided. Thank you, everybody, to the End of Trenches team. Uh, I'm Ryan Roxy. Until next time, enjoy Cheers. the ride. Cheers, man. <laughs> Trenches with Ryan.